Hello and welcome to this undergraduate skills video where we're going to learn about various basic laboratory calculations which will be extremely useful as you progress through your degree. Now why do you need to know these calculations? Well it will allow you to safely determine the concentration of liquids and powders in the lab whilst ensuring your experiments are at the correct concentrations. Now some of the examples we will go through at the end of this video will require knowledge of moles, molar mass and molarity, so please look through these videos if you need additional support. But without further ado, in this particular video we're going to focus on percentages. And so first and foremost, what is a percentage? Well the word percent describes a number or ratio that is expressed as a fraction of 100, hence the name per cent, meaning per 100. And because of this, it allows us to use percentages as a measure of concentration. Now there are three main ways in which we can express percentages depending on what we are looking at. We have percentage weight by volume, percentage volume by volume, and percentage weight by weight, all of which are very different and have specific use cases. Our percentage weight by volume measure is for mass concentration, so the ratio of solute weight to the solution volume, and is commonly used when a solid solute is added to a liquid solvent. Our percentage volume by volume measure is for volume concentration, so the ratio of solute volume to solution volume, and is commonly used when the solute is a liquid, and again this is added to a liquid solvent. And finally we have percentage weight by weight, which is much less common and we won't look at this in any detail here, however this is for mass fractions, so the ratio of solute weight to the weight of the solution. Now just to re-emphasize, they are all very different. A 1% weight per volume solution, a 1% volume per volume solution, and a 1% weight per volume solution may be very different, and that is because the density of a solute may have a different massive unit volume, with a key exception being water. But what do I mean by all of this? Well let's take a look at an example, and for this we will use glycerol. Now a 1% weight per volume solution will contain 1 gram of glycerol in a final volume of 100 milliliters, and a 1% volume per volume solution will contain 1 milliliter of glycerol in a final volume of 100 milliliters. However, due to the density of glycerol being 1.26 grams per milliliter, our percentage weight per volume and percentage volume per volume identifiers are not interchangeable, and this should be easy to see in our 1% volume per volume solution. Because whilst the solution only contains 1 milliliter of glycerol, because of its density, the solution has 1.26 grams of glycerol present, Therefore, a 1% volume per volume solution of glycerol is the same as a 1.26 percentage weight per volume solution. And by extension, a 1% weight per volume solution of glycerol contains 1 gram of glycerol, but because of its density, the solution has 0.79 milliliters of glycerol present. Therefore, a 1% weight per volume solution of glycerol is the same as a 0.79% volume per volume solution. And so hopefully from this you can see that the percentage weight per volume and percentage volume per volume are not interchangeable, and mixing them up can lead to incorrect solution concentrations. Okay, so moving on, how do we calculate the concentration of these types of solutions? Well thankfully there are some basic equations that we can use and these revolve around general percentage equations. And so to calculate our percentage weight by volume we take the solute mass, divide it by the volume of the solution and multiply this by 100. To calculate our percentage volume by volume we take the solute volume, divide it by the volume of the solution and multiply this by 100. Now one final thing to note when performing these calculations, it is really important that we use comparable units of similar orders of magnitude, meaning the units need to be equitable. So for instance, grams and milliliters are of the same orders of magnitude, as are micrograms and microliters. And so to help make sense of all of this, let's look at using these equations with a couple of examples. 
So in our first example, a student is told to weigh 0.36 grams of sodium chloride into a beaker and make this up to a final solution volume of 40 milliliters using water. The student wants to know what is the percentage weight per volume of the sodium chloride solution. And so if we bring up our associated equation, we can see that the percentage weight per volume is equal to the solute mass divided by the solution volume multiplied by 100. So now we can start adding information from our question into the equation, giving us percentage weight per volume is equal to 0.36 grams divided by 40 milliliters multiplied by 100 which we can simplify by completing the division in the equation, giving us percentage weight per volume is equal to 0.009 grams per milliliter multiplied by 100, allowing us to solve the equation, giving us a percentage weight per volume of 0.9. And this essentially means for every 100 milliliters of this sodium chloride solution, it would contain 0.9 grams of sodium chloride. Now moving on to our second example, a student is in the lab and is tasked with preparing an 80 milliliter 0.125% volume per volume solution of Triton X in a beaker. Assuming the stock concentration is 100%, the student wants to know how much of the stock Triton X does the student need to prepare into the beaker. And so if we bring up our associated equation, we can see that the percentage volume per volume is equal to the solute volume divided by the solution volume multiplied by 100. And because we are trying to identify the solute volume, we can use some basic algebra to rearrange the equation in order to find the solute volume. And so our solute volume is equal to the volume of the solution multiplied by the percentage volume per volume divided by 100. So now we can start adding information from our question into the equation, giving us solute volume is equal to 80 milliliters multiplied by 0.125% volume per volume divided by 100, which we can simplify by completing the division in the equation giving us solute volume is equal to 80 milliliters multiplied by 0.00125, which is now unitless because of our last calculation. We can then solve this equation, giving us a solute volume of 0.1 milliliters. This means the student will need to pipette 0.1 milliliters of the stock Triton X solution into the beaker and then make this up to 80 milliliters by adding 79.9 milliliters of solvent. Now moving on to our final and slightly more complex example. A student is in the lab and prepares 100 milliliters of a 0.1 molar sodium chloride solution in a beaker. The student wants to know what is the percentage weight per volume of the sodium chloride solution. And so if we bring up our associated equation, we can see that percentage weight per volume is equal to the solute mass divided by the solution volume multiplied by 100. So now we can start adding information from our question into the equation, giving us percentage weight per volume is equal to our solute mass, which we don't know right now, divided by 100 milliliters multiplied by 100. Now there is a problem in that we haven't directly been given the solute mass. However, we have been given a molar concentration, meaning we can calculate the solute mass we have. And for those that aren't up to speed with moles and molarity, please go through the moles and molarity videos to help understand these types of concentrations. And for those that do know, our solute mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. Now again, based on the information we have been given directly, we don't know the number of moles present, but we can calculate this. And so the number of moles is equal to the molarity multiplied by the volume in liters. And so we have now reached a point where we do know the required information and can start to sequentially complete each of these calculations. So now we can start adding information from our question into the equation, giving us moles is equal to 0.1 molar multiplied by 0.1 liters, giving us a value of 0.01 moles. 
meaning we can now calculate our solute mass by multiplying the number of moles by the molar mass, which if we calculate this from the periodic table, the molar mass of sodium chloride, based on the information listed here, would be 23 grams per mole plus 35.5 grams per mole, giving a molar mass of 58.5 grams per mole meaning we multiply 0.01 moles by 58.5 grams per mole, giving us a solute mass of 0.585 grams. And so now we are back to our original equation, which solving sequentially gives us a percentage weight per volume equal to 0.00585 grams per milliliter, which we can now multiply 100, giving us a final percentage weight per volume solution of 0.585. And so whilst it might not have seemed possible at first, we have been able to calculate the percentage weight per volume of the solution. And for those that didn't fully understand example number three, again, please go through the moles and molarity videos to better understand these calculations. And with that, we come to the end of this basic laboratory calculations video. Hopefully you found this content useful, easy to understand, and can use it going forward during your data analysis. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I hope you have a great day.